Hello and welcome to Controllers Tech. This is the sixth video in the W25Q Flash series, and today we will see how to write and read floats, integers, and also the 32-bit data. In the previous video we saw how to update the sectors, and how to read and write a single byte data into the memory. We will utilize those functions in today's video. Here is the project from the previous video. We will continue editing the source file we have created so far. A while ago I wrote a code to interface the EEPROM with STM32. It has the code for writing the floats and integers into the memory. Actually we need to convert the numbers into bytes first, and then write the bytes into the memory. We use the enums to do the conversion. Let's copy the conversion functions from here, and paste it in the W25Q source file. Now let's write a function to write the numbers into the flash memory. The parameters of this function are the start page, the offset on the start page, and the float value to write. As I mentioned, we need to convert the floats to the byte, and float occupies 4 bytes in the memory, so let's define an array of 4 bytes. Inside the function we will first convert the float value to the bytes, and it will be stored in the array we just defined. We can write the data using the write byte function, or using the sector update function, the choice is yours. I will write the code for both of them here, so use according to your convenience. The write byte function takes the address as the parameter, so let's calculate the address first. Since we are writing 4 bytes of data, we need to call the write function in A for loop. The address must increment with every write. Writing the data using the sector update method is going to be easier comparatively. We can pass the same parameters to the write function. The size is going to be 4 bytes, and the last parameter is the array we just defined. For now I am just commenting out this function, and we will write the data using the byte function. Now let's write another function to read the numbers. This function will return the float value, and the parameters are the start page, and the offset. Since we need to read the 4 bytes for a single float value, let's define an array to store 4 bytes. Now we will use the read function to read the 4 bytes of data from the provided page and offset. We have the 4 bytes now, and we will use the function bytes to float to convert the bytes to the float value. This value will be returned in the end. Let's define these functions in the header file now. Let me delete all the previous code from the main file. I am going to test these functions in sector 0 itself, so let's erase it. Let's define the float number that we are going to write to the memory, and another float variable, where we will store the value read from the memory. When the button is pressed, we will write the value to page 0 at an offset of 10. And let's also read the data from the same position, and store it in the float variable we defined. Alright let's build and debug the code. Here in the live expression I have added the float variable. Let's run the debugger now. I am pressing the button, and we have received the value. This is the same as what we wrote to the memory. A little variation is expected in the floats when they are stored. Now let's test it using the sector update function. In order to write the integral value, you can just pass the integer value to the function. Let's test it now. Here you can see we have received exactly the same value in the live expression. Basically we can store any number, even the negative values. Let's quickly test this. Here we have received the same value in the live expression. 
so writing numbers works fine. We can store basically any number within the float range. Now let's see how to store the 32-bit variables. Dot we will write a new function, whose parameters will be the start page, the offset on the start page, the size of the data, and the pointer to the 32-bit array. We can't store the 32-bit values directly to the memory, the memory can only store data in bytes. So we need to convert the 32-bit data to 8-bit data, and hence, each 32-bit variable will take 4 bytes. So let's define a byte array, whose size will be 4 times the size of the 32-bit array. Define index variable to keep track of the number of bytes in the byte array. Now we will split the 32-bit data, and store it in the 4 different bytes of the data 8 buffer. After the data has been stored, we will write it to the memory. We will use the write function, and pass the parameters directly to this function. The index variable is equal to the number of bytes we have stored, so let's pass it for the size parameter. Now we will write another function to read the 32-bit data. The initial definitions are going to be the same here. We will first read the data bytes from the requested position. The size is going to be 4 times the size of the 32-bit data. Now once we have the data in bytes format, we need to convert it to the 32-bit format. We can do this by shifting the data bytes, and adding them together. Let's build the code now. We have the warning about the index variable, but just ignore it. Define these functions in the header file, so that we can use them in the main file. Here we will first define a 32-bit array. I am storing four values, which includes a 8-bit value, a 16-bit value, a 32-bit value, and a random one. Define another 32-bit array to store the received values. Now in the while loop, when the button is pressed, we will write the data to page 0, at an offset of 250. Then read the data from the same location, and store it in the receive array. Alright let's build and debug the code. I am adding the our data array to the live expression. Run the debugger now. I pressed the button, and you can see the data received in the buffer. Let me change the format to hex. You can see we have the same data that we wrote to the memory. So the 32-bit variable was first splitted into 4 bytes data, and it was then stored to the memory. Later the 4 bytes were read from the memory, and then they were combined to output a 32-bit data. This is it for this video. We were able to store and read back the float values, the integral values, and the 32-bit variables. I hope you understood the video. The link to download the code is in the description below. Leave comments in case of any doubt. Keep watching, and have a nice day ahead.